Next up, the BYU Cougars. Seven and six last year. Uh, return eight on offense, six on defense. As far as experience goes, nationally number 49. Head coach Kalani Sataki, 20 and 19 in three years, went nine and four, then four and nine, and got off the hot seat a little bit last year with the seven and six season, thanks to a new offensive coordinator, former LSU offensive line coach Jeff Grimes, who really sparked the offense well, last year. Got a big win against Wisconsin, which helps you get off the hot seat. Yes. Well, and, and what really turned him around was uh, quarterback Zach Wilson, right? He, he was a freshman last year, uh, took over for Tanner Mangum, um, who it felt like he had been there for a decade. Correct. Uh, I think he had, was it a sixth year of eligibility granted to him? And so, yes. But after, after six games, even though he was the senior leader of the offense, it wasn't ticking. Things weren't working right. They brought him in. Uh, the offense responded. They've got eight starters back on that unit this year, so that's definitely a good thing. Defense loses leading tackler linebacker Siani Taki Taki, which is an awesome name, very, very awesome name. And they lose 6'9 defensive end Corbin uh, Kafusi. I, I don't know how to say that, but I remember watching him last year, and it was absurd seeing that 6'9 yeah. dude out there. Uh, they've got, they had the number 18 total defense last year. Uh, defensive tackle Tonga is a star. Like he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. Schedule not easy at all. I think they're going to be a lot better than their schedule uh, than the record indicates. I've got them going six and six this year, and that is only because of how ridiculous their schedule is. I agree. It is bonkers looking at this thing. Why they would set it up the way that they did, right? Like this is. We'll we'll just run through it really quick. This is part of being but, independent. You I've got them put, six and six. What do you have? I got them five and seven. Five and, but, and that's but this reasonable. is this is part of being an independent. I mean, Notre Dame. Well, the schedule, Army's an independent, and they. I yeah, mean, but that that they they get a little bit of benefit of being a military academy. BYU um, is, but like Notre Dame does this. I mean, yes. Do you look at their schedule last year? I mean, Notre Dame had a gauntlet, brother. No, it, it's true. It's true. And like BYU, I think just may not have been quite ready for this. Well, no. Now they could surprise me. They could end up going like you know ten and two or something. I just don't, I don't see. It. I don't see it. Uh, I don't see that. Here's what they run through. They've got Utah to start with. Of it's course, a that's game. a big rivalry game. Tough, they tough get game. it at home though, so that's good. Nah, I don't know if that matters. Um, <laughs> at Tennessee, USC, Washington, at Toledo, at South Florida, Boise State, at Utah State, Liberty, Idaho State, at UMass, and at San Diego State. Like it is front loaded like a mother. Oh yeah. It's so like I think they're going to win the last four games. I think they beat USC. I think they win at Toledo, and that's it. Six and six bowl game. I think they're pretty happy with that after looking at this gauntlet. So my logic, we and you had the conversation about the USC game, and my logic is: as a team like this, if they beat a team like USC, is a game they're not supposed to win. Yeah. They usually tend to lose a game they're not supposed to lose, and so I kind of count it as a wash. But would, would South Florida or Utah State be a game that they're not supposed to lose? Probably not. I think those are equal. See, and that's that's the thing. I figured, I don't know, I don't know I figured that if they beat USC, they'll probably lose at Utah State. Like, I don't think they lose at home to Liberty or Idaho State. I don't think they lose at UMass. Uh, I think the game at San Diego State basically defines the whole season. Okay. But the fact that that game against San Diego State comes after San Diego State's conference season... Like, I, I think they're not going to care about the BYU game. Uh, I don't think any of these. The coaches that are good coaches, San Diego you, State's you a might great be right. coach team. They, there is no I don't care about this game. That doesn't exist. Now you might be right. It just doesn't exist in these guys, You might man. be right. You might be right. I'm just saying, I think that's a spot that BYU could end up I think it's a tough schedule. I think – I think Liberty is a tougher That's, game. You, you say that, but you love Bill Clark, and you saw what Bill Clark did in the, the last game last year against uh, Middle Tennessee. I mean, they got beat 27-3 to at Middle Tennessee State and then turned around and had to play them in the conference championship game the next week. I so, think that's a little different. I, I look at it this way. San Diego State, well, I, I've got them at 10-1 and one at that point in the year, and I've got BYU at 5-6 and six and needing to get to a bowl game. Well, you're right. One team will want it more than the other. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm fine. saying. That's fine. And it's not to say that the coaches don't care. It's that somebody's probably going to want it more than the other one, and I okay. think it's going to be flip flop that way. All right. And so, um, what you got them five and seven? I got them five and seven. Okay. Let's jump.